Hey everyone, you might recognize me and Eric here from the Nintendo Prime Podcast. I just want to let you know before you get into this segment that this merchandise you see on our shirts and on our cups and on anything else you ever see with Nintendo Prime branding on it, you can get in the description below. You can also get the full audio podcast not segmented in the description below. And if you would like early access to our podcast, please go over to patreon.com slash Nintendo Prime. For $5 a month, you gain early access to the full audio podcast. And Mr. Eric, what do you get for $20 a month? Ooh, you get to join us on a podcast. That is right. So... If you would like to ever be on the Nintendo Pride Podcast, get your voice in front of thousands of other Nintendo fans out there. You know what to do. Hit up that $20 tier on Patreon. Anyways, folks, on to the episode. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to the Nintendo Pride Podcast, episode 37. 37. 37. Can you believe 37? You know, I would say that episode 52 should be special, 52 weeks in a year, but it oh, yeah. just hasn't been weekly until, <laughs> until recently. Right? In fact, I should, prob- <laughs> I should probably go back and mark down when did it start weekly so we know when we've hit uh, you know an actual full year in a row. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, we should yeah. actually go back too and figure out when the very first one is because... Oh, I had no, no idea. Yeah. It was yeah. so yeah. sporadic at the beginning. I was still working at Zelda Informer. Long story. Been over it on our live streams before. Anyways, welcome to the Nintendo Prime Podcast. Uh, we have one guest this week. You guys know who he is. He, he He's like the seducer of our weekends here. Whoa. At Nintendo <laughs> I Prime. have never heard that before, and I'll gladly accept. Gladly, <laughs> gladly accept. By the way, how, how short of 300 subs are you over there on your YouTube channel, 5J? Uh, like only like 16 folks. It's pretty close. All right. Nice. Yeah. I want 16 of you this week to go over. I know we're all busy. We, we understand it's Mario Odyssey. Got it. You're busy. 16 of you. That's all I ask. I got like 64 subs today. All I need is 16 of you guys yeah. to go over to his channel. Let him hit 300. Come on. You guys can do it. been trying to promote him great. a little bit. Let's get 5J. You know, we have like 20 plus people that show up sometimes for his streams on weekends. Go subscribe to his channel. Right. Man. He's, he does a lot of, like, if you love uh, 5J Saturdays, 5J Sundays, dude, he does that stuff all the time on his channel. Plus, he does, like, some kooky things with his wife. Um, <laughs> he's, he's just an all-around good guy over there. Go support Nothing him. scandalous. Let me just clarify I that. Say, nothing, nothing. I was going to say, I, ain't, I, ain't I don't know. There. I mean, those food episodes. Mm. <laughs> but, no, seriously, go follow 5J. He does some great work. I... The whole, the whole reason I love having him live stream for us is because I think he's an excellent live streamer. I hope you guys agree. Um, and you. if you have any feedback for him, feel free to leave it, obviously. Uh, feedback for me as well. We mm-hmm. want to always improve our live streams. Um, but, yeah, we I really want to start getting his channel going a bit more over there because he deserves it. He, he works too hard to not be further ahead than where he is now. Thank you, Nate. That being said, we obviously have to address that elephant that's in this room. Right. Well, I mean, yeah, <laughs> I kind of looked at myself. Yeah, I mean, yeah, me. yeah, yeah right. <laughs> um, so we're recording this. This is like going to blow your guys' minds because you're not going to hear this until Monday or sometime next week. We are mm-hmm. recording this the night that Super Mario Odyssey releases. <laughs> so we're going to talk about Odyssey, but this is just to keep it in context that we haven't played it. Yeah. So we will be playing it like shortly after we're done yeah recording yeah but uh yeah we're not playing it uh before we talk about it today so everything we talk about today is going to be in context of no experience with the game now that being said we obviously can't ignore the fact it's coming i thought about like making this like a another themed week like when we did retro week i'm like dude everyone's just gonna want to talk odyssey all next week we can't just not have some sort of conversation about it i will tell you we're not gonna have obviously any impressions or previews or uh in-depth discussions we're actually going to have a separate video that we're going to do next week where i'm going to try to get some people together uh to talk about it as kind of like a podcast bonus or or something on the side kind of like when eric and i did a impression on uh was it mario plus rabbit yeah, metal so. yeah. that was separate mm. that was separate from the podcast as well because our podcast runs on a weekly schedule so it's not always going to line up perfectly with game releases uh, so because of that, we're still going to do, you know, some awesome coverage of those game releases, but they might not always be in our podcast per se, especially since we record on Thursdays. Podcast doesn't come out until Monday. That gives three days worth of editing, which believe me, after last <laughs> week's three and a half hour podcast of Wolf Den that didn't start releasing on YouTube until like Wednesday. Um, it, sometimes it takes longer because yeah. our podcast can get crazy, but it won't be three hours this time. We're on a time limit. <laughs> I am not missing the Super Mario Odyssey launch priorities. Right. 
Um, nice. But I have to address it because there are some things we do know. We are recording this the day, obviously the day of the night of the game coming out. So you guys know that it is like Thursday. We got uh, three hours. Something like that. So Super Mario oh, Odyssey reviews have been landing. The embargo's up. So there's a lot of details out there we could look up, but I'm, I'm going to avoid all that because there's no spoilers. Um, but those reviews. Yeah. Okay. I don't know how many of you guys out there care. A lot. A lot of people do because that's all they can seem to talk about today. <laughs> Maybe it's just because they don't have the game, so they, oh, that's yeah, all they yeah, can, that's talk all you can talk about. <laughs> um, but man, we thought Breath of the Wild was impressive earlier this year. Uh, it sat it at was. like number one game of all time for a good couple months. And then finally, you know, more reviews started to get counted. And it kind of fell down a little bit, but not far. Mm-hmm. It's about a 97 on most websites. Uh, Open Critic, uh, Critic, I think, has it at a 96. But either way, that's like the top score from this year. Yeah. Um, Crazy. Then Super Mario Odyssey comes around. Um, I don't know exactly where it's at right this second, but I remember uh, earlier today when I reported on it um, on GameRankings.com, it was the number one rated game of all time at a 99%. Um, it was like a point, nice. point five percent ahead of, uh, and by the way, they don't even have Ocarina of Time number one. I think it was 0.5% ahead of Super Mario Galaxy, hmm. which was like oh. 0.3% ahead of Ocarina of Time. Wow. Um. Yeah, Galaxy is one of those games that, depending on you know what reviews were counted, it, it's right up there um, from way back when. And uh, I'm trying to think, Metacritic, that's obviously a big one a lot of people care about. Uh, it was tied with Breath of the Wild at a 97. Um, obviously, way less reviews counted, so it could end up going higher. It could end up dropping below Breath of the Wild, but it's like right there. Mm-hmm. Uh, currently, it's technically like percentage points ahead a Breath of the Wild, but they don't show you percentage points. They just show you a hard score there. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, sure. it's it's technically rated higher, but it, it's going to show you it's the same rating. Uh, and then it was, uh, what was the other one? Say? There was Open Critic, that, and... Oh, I don't think I talked about Open Critic. Oh, Game Rankings. Game Rankings, I'm sorry. That was the one that had the 99%. Open Critic had it at a 98, whereas Breath of the Wild was at 96. So full, full two hit points ahead. Um, Impressive. That is just crazy. insane. Insane. And we've known the reviews were probably going to be good for a while because, like, Edge Magazine was the first one to get a review out. Perfect 10s. Famitsu came out, gave it, you know, it tied for the highest uh, 3D Mario score ever at a 39 out of 40. Um, wow. You know, as I said, basically the original Galaxy and Super Mario 64 are the only games to come close in the 3D Mario space. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm prefacing 3D because there are some 2D games that I've rated a little higher. Uh, not overall, like, aggregate-wise, but... Huh. So... Breath of the Wild, 97. Yeah. Super Mario Galaxy, 97. Two of the highest rated games of all time releasing on a brand new platform. Granted, I know Breath of the Wild came out on Wii U. Mm-hmm. Sorry, Odyssey. I've been doing that all day. I've been calling it Galaxy <laughs> all day. All day. Because it's been it's probably since Galaxy that I've even been remotely close to this hype. Yeah. And <laughs> I can tell you right now, I'm probably going to cry when I start playing the game. Yeah. Because awesome. unlike Galaxy, Galaxy is fantastic. I mean, I, no, this takes nothing away from Galaxy. We have not really had a true uh, kind of open exploration Mario game since Mario 64. There's only ever been one. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. <laughs> it's amazing, too, because like, it was so popular, but they only did it once. Right. I, granted, that was in the heyday. There was other, you know, Banjo-Kazooie and, and all those other, like, 3D platformers with the open exploration was kind of a big deal back then. But it's gone away. Now, 3D platformers haven't, per se. I mean, Mario kind of persisted. But, again, Galaxies, mm-hmm. like, you're going planet to planet. That's not really open. Um, and a lot of the planets kind of felt the same over time. Uh, whereas in Super Mario 64, we know each world that you went into was vastly different. Mm-hmm. Um, same art style. Not as different as this. It's crazy. We have, like, right, like right. you know, <laughs> lunch food and... Yeah, <laughs> you know, and like an ocean kingdom, and you know, yeah, a, a New city, York a city, city. Yeah, uh, basically, basically New York City with realistic visuals. Like, what? All that, yeah. Mario- and there's some people that are put off by by all that different art styles, but I actually kind of like that. Yeah. So, Why not? before we talk a little bit about uh, Odyssey, we have to address what I feel is even the bigger elephant in the room. Is this the best launch year for a Nintendo console in the history? Of Nintendo consoles. Personally, I would have to say, yeah. So, I mean, what for as far as launch years, what what 
launch has ever had so many games in the first six months, let alone the first year. I mean, if you look at the upcoming titles that are still coming out in 2017 for the Switch, it's insane. Dozens and dozens of them Mm -hmm. still this calendar year. It's blowing my mind. And we have basically, uh, you know, it would be the equivalent of having like Ocarina of Time and Super Mario 64 launching in the same year, which did not happen. No, it did not. <laughs> so, yeah, I'd that. have to say. If Super Mario 64 and Ocarina of Time launched in the same year, that would just be insane. And that's what we're getting mm-hmm. the Switch. Yeah. We're yeah. getting two of the highest rated games to ever exist from two of the most iconic franchises to ever exist oh, for in sure. the same year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's just on a platform that people like. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. You know, it's not yeah. like the N64. I think people liked it, but it was a little weird, right? The controller, oh, yeah, the three yeah. prong thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, it was definitely playing second fiddle at the time to like mm-hmm. PlayStation, PlayStation 2. Yeah. And Nintendo doesn't feel like they're playing second fiddle. They're leading on the sales charge, which admittedly they should be because right. the, the consoles are going up against released years ago. But mm-hmm. I mean, the fact that they're leading on the sales charts means they're not playing second fiddle to the systems for sales right now. So it's. I mean, we're just talking about two of the you know highest rated games of all time, blah blah blah. But there's also things yeah. like you know Splatoon two, mm-hmm. and and Arms, mm-hmm. um, and, and oh, Mario sure. plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle. Like those are just yeah. like the franchises that Nintendo helped bring bring out. You know, obviously I know Ubisoft did Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle. And actually, an interesting point was brought up when I was watching the Digital Foundry technical analysis of it of Mario Odyssey. Every single Nintendo published game on Switch, but Breath of the Wild, which they're going to give a pass because it started on Wii U. Sure. It is 60 fps that's awesome so every switch exclusive basically that they've released that they have published themselves not you know published by another company so like fire and the warriors um 60 fps and that although there's an option to be 30 fps um like everything 60 and i, I was thinking about that because a lot of people say oh you only need 60 fps of like for certain in like shooters or multiplayer games and here's Nintendo, like, well, here's a single player platformer, and no, you're, you're getting it at 60. Yeah. Yeah. Period. Like, Mario has That's never, crazy. 3D Mario games, fun fact, I don't know if anybody knows, there's never been a 3D Mario game in, at 60 FPS. And because there's never been a 3D oh. Mario game at 60 FPS, none of us, unless we have the game, or you, know, you guys know by now playing it, before this game came, none of us know what that feels like unless you cheated and, and played it on PC with an emulator. Right. <laughs> and even then, is that true 60? Because that's just, you know, that, that's forcing 60 versus the game being built for it. Right, right. Um, mm-hmm. Now, fun little fact. Uh, there was a demo build. It never came public of Super Mario Sunshine that ran at 60 FPS. But the final version was 30. So <laughs> they did they, they did try the 60 FPS thing at one point. For some reason, they dropped it. Probably um, too many cutbacks. Because even in Odyssey... Um, it doesn't run at you know a stable resolution. It's dynamic. Mm-hmm. Um, it changes between yep. three different resolutions. I don't have it written down in front of me, but, but in docked mode, it changes between three different resolutions. It's like 900p, 810p, and 720. So it never dips below HD. Um, in mm. in portable mode, it's really weird. Uh, it's like 720p, but like when you stand still, it's always 720p when you stand still. But when you're in motion. <laughs> it's like it splits it off into like two different images that are like 640 by 720 and like the world ends up still looking 720p like if you count it it's 720p but mario himself is not <laughs> he's actually what? a lower resolution it's really and from apparently what, what the foundry said you're not going to be able to t- like it's on such a small screen you are not really going to notice it at all yeah. but it's something sure. they did to maintain the 60 fps that is um, an insane solution, right? Yeah. Like, who would have ever thought <laughs> we're going to have the world at one thing, but your character model? No, it's going to yeah, be right? lower res. Yeah, the thing you're That's seeing so all the time for sure, lower yeah, res. Right? Like, and uh, whatever because of the size of well, the screen, it works. I was going to say so. it, your world is a lot bigger part of the screen than what your character is. So yeah, it yeah. makes a little yeah. bit more sense. And, and you know, there's other cutbacks like the shadow qualities aren't as good. And well, I mean, that's oh, right. all obvious stuff. Um, but on that small of a screen, and I've said this before, when people complain like about Doom um, dropping a little bit below sub HD, because here we go, here's Mario's model dropping below HD. Mm-hmm. You're not mm-hmm. going to notice on a screen that size. No. Like mm-hmm. when people are like, oh my gosh, it's dropping down to 540p. Dude, we've been playing 3DS games at 240p for the last five years. <laughs> you're telling yeah. me you're really going to notice on that small screen between 720 and 540? I dare you yeah. to record and eyeball me. 
Yeah. Eyeball that and tell yeah. me what it flip yeah. flip between 720 and 540. Right. You're going to tell. Right. You're I think the Vita tell. was only 540p and that was a good looking screen. Yeah, it's it's ridiculous when people could. I mean, I understand if it's 540p on the big screen, mm-hmm. you're going to notice that, yeah. of course. Yeah. But Yuck. but this is a tiny screen. That's a, the one advantage of a portable system with a tiny screen is you can get away with stuff like that. right. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, come on. As I said, 3DS has been getting away with 240p, which in 20, think about it, in 2017, they're still selling a system at 240p screens. <laughs> it's sad. It's, yeah, yeah. It's like, man, <laughs> how did Nintendo get away with that? Uh, because, well, there's no competition. Yeah. Dedicated the games, game. yeah. Um, anyways. Yeah. yeah. Just This launch year, I, I, I was trying to look up before this, because when I came up with this time, I'm like, all right, I got to go back through Nintendo's launch years, right? Mm-hmm. Um, we had a pretty good first year. Uh, I believe in that first year, I can't, I believe it was the first, within the first 12 months they had Galaxy come out. Um, and that was kind of the big one. And if you want to pair that with Wii Sports and Smash, like that's a pretty good first year. Mm-hmm. Uh, Wii Sports is not widely considered one of the best games ever made though. It's a very popular game. Yeah. It right. blew up the platform. It was a system seller for sure, but it wasn't like. Right. Among gamers, consider them like among like people like us that are gaming enthusiasts. We might love Wii Sports, but there's no way in heck we're putting that above Galaxy. And, right, right. You know, Mar- any pretty much any Mario game. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was like a Mario Party game. Kind of, yeah. yeah. Oh, a good really one. fun, but good yeah, one, yeah, not going to top anybody's best games of all time list. Yeah, right, right. Uh, so and, and yeah, Smash. That's great. I mean, but this year it's not like <laughs> yes, we have the two, you know, two the the two pillars. Mm-hmm. But you know, we didn't even mention Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. I get it; it's a port, but it's the best Mario Kart game ever made. Yeah, battle like, mode, objectively the best. Mm-hmm. Now that they brought battle mode, that was like the difference maker. That was the one thing yes. that's like, yeah, you can still argue Kart 64 because of the battle mode, mm-hmm. but yeah. not anymore. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, it's. I, I can't think of a better year. The, the only way it could get better, obviously, is if you really care about third party games. Uh, Nintendo has had systems in the past, like the SNES, where like the first year had a whole bunch of third party games. Yeah. Um, so if you were really into those, that's fine. But, but now for, you're talking about big developers because I mean, yeah. is is that definition including indie games? That in which that's case the thing. there's a deluge. That's the thing. Um, <laughs> the, right now, uh, before the game even launched, before my Odyssey even came out, there's over 200 games on Switch. Ooh. Now I know yeah, a lot of people are like, right. oh, but indie games don't count. Do they not? Are they not games? I'm sorry. Right. Uh, yeah. Well, and right. actually, I believe Sonic Mania was the hundredth game on the system. Crazily, so there's been a hundred games since Sonic Mania. Whoa. Well, it's been a say. There's been like twenty games coming out per week. <laughs> yeah. It's been like if you go in the eShop, it's so hard to keep up, and that's why I actually hope that they revise the eShop a little bit. It's time now. You're getting mm-hmm. so many releases now. You need to do something about that. Mm-hmm. Let yep. the cream rise to the top. Uh, you know. That's the thing where I don't think Nintendo needs a Nintendo seal of quality, but I think when they're going through, they need to actually try all the games and be like, okay, I know this this dev might have put a bunch of time into this one game, but it's really not that good. We don't mm-hmm. want that representing our system at yep. the front of the eShop. Mm-hmm. Now, again, I've, I've talked about it in the past so they can fix it. So they, if they make the default uh, page that you see in the eShop more like the front page of Netflix, mm-hmm. where you have all the different genres and, mm-hmm. and scrolling yeah, yeah. thing, you can, you're going to find those games anyways. Like if you release a sports game right now, there's only like eight sports games right. on there. When you scroll through that, you're going to yeah. see that, that crappy, you know, supposedly crappy indie game, and it's still going to get a shot. Um, right. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, good plan. And then Nintendo can obviously, you know, they'll have their featured area at the top, and that's where they'll have like Odyssey and you know the AAA pubs or any exclusive indie games because you know Nintendo likes pumping those exclusives. Um, Golf Story, come on, come on. Oh yes. Keep that going. Keep pumping that. Up. So good. Um, still haven't beat it, but I'll get there after Odyssey. Sorry, <laughs> everything gets set to the side for Odyssey. My life gets set to the side for Odyssey. Yeah, my children. You must stay in bed all day, locking you in the room. I got to play Odyssey. Yeah. And, and, and for the viewers out there, that's not true. No. <laughs> so just got to throw that out there because you know there will be that one crazy person. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I'm on my child abuse. Don't worry. That's what the girlfriend's for. Um, <laughs> no, what, actually. her in the room? <laughs> Oh, God. Uh, I'm pretty sure she's going to be tired of watching the kids after two hours tomorrow, so I'm going to have them all day. So enjoy my Odyssey stream. Uh, it, you guys have already enjoyed it by the time you hear this, but um, I'm recording this before I get Odyssey and I'm doing a live stream of Odyssey. Enjoy it because you might not see me for a few days. Not because I'm playing Odyssey, although I'll probably play it. 
Yeah. But because I'll be watching my kids. Um, she needs a break. She's been through a lot this week. Um, yeah. Do you guys have any thoughts? Like, I, I literally can't think of any other time period that I prefer more with Nintendo for first year than right now. Launch yeah. year? No. I mean, that's nuts. I mean, we're not talking like, oh my god, the Switch is the best lineup of all time. Like, it, it's it's year one. Let's back off yeah. of that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Especially when I mean, you know, you think of things like N sixty four. Think of all the great games. I mean, come on, mm-hmm. two massively good, good like like pillar games, and then like you know a handful of really really good games, and you know indies. We're not going to mm-hmm. dismiss indies. I, I think too many of you guys dismiss indies, and it kind of upsets me. <laughs> I actually almost might need to make a rant video on that. Oh, why not? Go for it. Seriously, haven't we passed the threshold where indies are not considered? Um, uh, okay. To make a triple A game, what defines it as triple A is the budget. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. It used to be quality. Quality used to be the defining factor. But I'm sorry, there are indie games better than triple A games. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. So are they triple A then? No. So now triple A is based on budget. So back in the day, it used to be you had triple A and then you had B tier, because indies, you know, B tier basically was indies. Yeah. Um then B tier went away. And AAA took over. Then AAA started crashing in on itself. And then all of a sudden the indie scene popped up. You know what the indie scene is? It's called the B tier. It's just back. Yeah. And you're going to tell me games like Earthworm yeah. Jim back in the day were, were not worthy of being in consideration with all the other platformers of the day? <laughs> you could even say, argue that Mega Man back then was a B tier game. Is that not on par? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I know it's Capcom. Yeah, I know. But it, I'm, I'm just saying that... A lot of these franchises we know and love today kind of started out as B tier games. Mm-hmm. They weren't like yeah, the first the, Mega Man, yeah, for sure. Like, it's a little bit janky. <laughs> yeah, it, it it it's one of those things that we need to start giving indies the respect they deserve. And there's plenty of you that do, obviously. Um, I mean, I can't tell you how many people keep beating me over the head that I don't own Stardew Valley and Steam Dig Two yet. Oh, like, like, that's just that. I just <sighs> I think I let me. I might just, just kill join that day. party. Yeah. <laughs> It's just because there's so many games coming out, so many ones I want to buy. I can't afford to buy them all. Yeah. Um, but man, that's the thing. Like when people say, "Oh, the Switch doesn't have games, or it's lacking third-party support," I get it. It doesn't have as much AAA third-party support as you want. But man, even on Wii U and 3DS, I don't remember a first year that had this many great indie games. Yeah. Like holy, yeah. like every week, there's like top-tier indie games releasing. Some of them yeah. are older. Stardew Valley is an example. Uh, but the reason that people are so excited about that is like Stardew Valley, it's the new Harvest Moon. It's It feels like it's home. Yeah, and it's bringing in people who never played Harvest Moon. Yeah. like Somehow it's appealing even broader than its source material. Hmm. Just great. Just crazy. That's crazy. Mm. Yeah. 